Welcome to The Fallen State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all so much for being with me. Don't forget that The Fallen State is now on Locals.com. So click on the link in the video subscription to support our work. I appreciate it. So I have with me Stevie, Stevie Knight and Laura Foss. Uh, Stevie is a YouTuber personality and content creator. And Laura works for a, as a realtor here in California. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, Stevie, let me ask, I know you have, you're a YouTuber. What's your purpose for your YouTube? Um, bring attention back to reality. And what is reality? What's actually going on, and that's a loaded question, but you know, there's, because <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's too many different realities for everybody. Everybody lives in their own perception right now, right. and they cast aside what's actually going on. And for, for those who actually bring attention to reality, you know, they get demonized. And I'm just one of these soldiers out here trying to bring attention back to reality, regardless what the situation is. And do people demonize you? Uh, to, I mean, I, I, yes, but people are, there are people speaking on the same stuff I'm speaking on. They get demonized much worse. So, like, the stuff that I'm going through, I can stand it. Yeah. But bringing attention to reality, talking about the truth and getting, you know, criticized for it, like demonized for it, attacked for it, you know, that's, that's the biggest problem to me. So uh, I, want, I want to give people confidence in talking about realities and not being afraid of the backlash that, from whoever, cancel culture, society, family, cousins, whatever. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's really my main focus. And I guess uh, male empowerment is an is a offset of that that I want to bring attention to as well. But the source of it is just reality. Like, the reality, like the actual facts. And so you were walking down the road one day and you decide, you know what, let me bring reality to life. No, it's no it's all the <laughs> no, it's all the stuff that's going on. It's the a crazy mess, stuff. Huh? Yeah, yeah, all the crazy <laughs> stuff going on. And me voicing my concern or my opinion on it and seeing the backlash for it. It's just you know, society's in a bad spot right now. Yeah. And we need more people to bring attention to reality and people are scared to do so because of the powers that be. And yeah. I'm doing my best to, you know, instill confidence in others to talk about what's actually going on and using my platform to bring attention to reality. And Laura, what's important to you? It's important to me to be a good woman to my man, um, support him in everything that he does. And um, these are conversations that we were having before he started his um, second YouTube channel. Um, and we were really passionate about this. Uh, we just had our first child. Um, so a lot of these things, uh, the mess touches close uh, yeah. with us having a child. So yeah, we just want to bring awareness to it. And what's a good woman for your man? What is a good woman? Whatever it is that he needs me to be. Oh, really? Yep, take uh, care of him every way. Right, and so is he the head of you? He is. And you obey him? I do. You do? I do. And how does, how does he deal with you when some morning you wake up just ticked off about nothing? It don't happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I guess I'd say I'm an unusual um, woman, but I'm, you know, I take care of myself. I do a lot of self-care, so I'm not negative. I don't bring negativeness to my relationship at all. Really? But if I ever do, he doesn't deal with, he just doesn't respond. He doesn't really deal with my emotional swings. <laughs> so is uh, Stevie the first man you ever met that knew how to handle you? He's the first man um, that I respected enough to become really self-aware and um, change my ways that weren't working. Um, as a businesswoman, um, I was extremely masculine. I was extremely dominant. Yeah. And I like masculine, dominant men, so I would butt heads a lot. And we did when we first got together. Right. We had a lot of issues. Um, so yeah, I had to do a lot of um, reflection and work on myself, but it took him for me to do that work. And what do other women think about you coming down from that ego role of being all masculine and equal to a man? How do your friends deal with that? They respect it now because, you know, they want what we got. And um, I'm very direct and I also speak my mind, so... I'm really good about calling uh, my girlfriends out on their <laughs> nice. 
Bullshit. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do they get angry at you about it? Who you um, call them out? They don't get angry at me. Um, they probably don't want to hear it, but I speak the truth anyways. So, uh, Stevie, what made you decide to stay with Laura of all the women? You, well, I don't know how many you've been with, but... <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to stay with her and make a baby? Man, because she's a shit, pretty much. <laughs> she's you know, a shit? Yeah, she's a shit. You what know does what that saying? mean? Um, like, she, she holds me down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know she's loyal. She got my back regardless. Like, even all this YouTube and, you know, I guess status and all that, none of that shit really matters, man. Right. Like, yeah. we got a solid foundation, you know what I mean? Um, she puts me first. I, I put her first. It's just organic, you know what I mean? And, and it's, 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 it's required a lot of work for us to get to such a, a, a good place right now. And nothing's perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. But I, I'd be willing to bet that, you know, the, the, the stuff we got, within this is a lot better off than, than the majority of stuff out there. Cause we can, we can communicate. We got to the point where we can talk about whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of how, com how uncomfortable it is. You know what I mean? She can tell me whatever I can tell her, whatever. Um, she just, she just like a, a, a ride or die at this point, man. I have no questions about her motives, her agendas, whatever. She puts me first. She puts our family first. And then, um, you know, I do my I do my my side of it too. I try to be the best man I can to be right. for her. You know what I mean? And she she does it as well. So it's like there's nothing out there for me. Like I've been I've been there, done that. It like that. It could be the baddest woman ever walking by me. It doesn't matter because nice. like it's just a. It's not it's not it's not messing with this. So this is your first child you have. Yeah. And what is it like to be a father? It's very different. Um, <laughs> changes my changes your perspective because I was very selfish before, as anybody would be without having a child. But once you had a child, like your whole perspective changes. Like everything everything I do now is to set him up, set us up for you know the best the best possible life we can have. You know what I mean? It makes me work that much harder. Um, I don't really think about myself anymore. So. So you, had a, you made a boy, huh? Mm -hmm. Real men make boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our friends told us. There's no chance you're having a girl. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Are you going to have a truck, make a truckload of babies? Man, nah. Yeah, I don't we, know nah. about a truck. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Um, do you plan to get married? <sighs> I knew that question was coming, man. <laughs> um, I don't... I don't like the idea of how marriage is presently constructed. I think marriage today is a, is a flawed system. Um, it sets men up for failure. Um, we've had discussions about this. She wants to get married tomorrow. You know what I mean? You want to be married, huh? Yeah. She, the, the, with the idea of it, but she knows how I feel, I feel about it. I don't like how the state's involved in it. I don't like the, the histories that have passed where have left men in shambles just ruin their lives because of just how the system is flawed, you know what I mean? Um, whenever we do do that, it's gonna be under our circumstances, it's gonna be totally different than the norm to, you know what I mean? Because she deserves to be a wife, she deserves to, 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 to feel that, but um, you know, I don't, I don't agree at all with how marriage, the system of marriage is. And when you say marriage, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about that. And with that, I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from. But what we do is going to be what we do is going to be what we do. You know what I mean? Meaning that you're going to make up your own rules and live by that. Yeah, absolutely. And that would that give you the freedom to walk away if she started to act up or something? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have away. freedom to walk away regardless of circumstances. Well, most guys don't because they end up having to pay child support, house taken yeah, away from them, yeah, and all kind of mess. Yeah. Are you avoiding the way your system that you're working on, would that avoid all that or something? It would avoid it, but that's not the true mode. That's not the intention behind it. My intention behind it is that marriage is a flawed system. There's nothing good about how marriage is presently constructed right now. There's nothing good about it. You know what I mean? Um, 
mainly for the man, but speci- more specifically the, the breadwinner, but like paternity, paternity court, family court is, is a business yeah, at the end of the day, up, yeah. and all they care about is a dollar. They don't care about circumstances, whatever the, whatever the hell it is. They just want to get that check from whoever is providing that check. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's pretty much... Like, if you look at the statistics and all that, man, it's like you would never sign a mortgage with those type of rates. You would never buy a car with those type of rates yeah. as far as the successes of marriage. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't buy a car that would start 50% of the time. So why would I invest my everything into this just because of some la-la land fantasy that, that they've conditioned society to, to, to walk? You know what I mean? Like, if, if this is what I'm going to do, this is what we're going to do, this is what, we, this is what this is what, I can't talk, this is what we're, this is what we're going to do. You know what right. I mean? It's, I don't care about how people look at me, or the, the societal pressure of what marriage is, they, I, I can kiss my ass, you know what I mean? Um, what the? Yeah, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, 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 we, what, what we're gonna do is what we're gonna do. You right. I mean? So you wanna be married now? Um, I have a really great relationship. I think that I have been conditioned to want that. I think, you know, since we're little, um, that's kinda ingrained in our heads from our families, um, coming from a religious background. Um, that's kind of just what you're, you know, what you look forward to, I guess. Um, but I know my relationship is so good. I don't need to sign a piece of paper with the state of California to approve of my relationship. I don't think that signing a piece of paper would change anything. I'm not with Stevie for any type of financial gain. Um, so, you know, uh, we are in the same tax bracket. So. The financial side of it doesn't, um, I think, where it would be an incentive for women, um, it doesn't matter to me. So however it looks like for us, for him to be comfortable with it, um, we can do our own thing um, without getting the state involved. Um, That's not even something I want to do regardless of, you know, whether I want to do it today or ever. So you're in love with Stevie? I am. And what is love? What does that feel like? Putting someone before yourself. Putting someone, what does that mean? I put his needs before mine. Really? Can you give me an example of that? Um, sure, I mean, I just, you know, before I make myself food, before I even think of making myself a plate, something simple, I make his food. Uh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still hearing that. Crazy, right? <laughs> I do That's 90% amazing. of cooking, cleaning, and taking care of our son. So we've got a little bit of traditional roles. I'm obviously more modern in the fact that I have a business. I run a business. Um, so, you know, I also make money. But I definitely take on a more traditional mother, and so housekeeper. Stevie is going to be real wealthy one day. He's going to have more money than Donald Trump. Are you willing to be a housewife and not work or anything? And- homeschool the kids and that kind of thing? Stevie wouldn't want that for me. He would he not? Loves, yeah, no, he loves because I can do both. But it's so hard on a mother to watch over the man's children and, and work and things like that because women are so emotional. All that stress would like freak them out and they would kill the children. <laughs> well, I do a lot of yoga. I go to the gym <laughs> six days a week and I'm... Um, I can take on, I've always, I mean, I've always had three jobs and went to college, and so I just, I'm used to taking on more than most people do, Um, so. But are you willing to give all that up? Because he seemed to have a a totally different way he want this thing to go, so that it could work and last forever. Are you willing to give all that up if he should tell you to? Yeah, like for example, he, we, you know, we talked about moving out of California. Um, and I don't even question it. Obviously, my business is here. Um, but he said, hey, let's move. I, I would be down to move, start over, you know, do whatever. And if he did not want me to work, then, you know. Then what? Then I wouldn't work. You would not work? Yeah, correct. Amazing. But he wouldn't want that because he loves that I am ambitious. He loves to see the she business be side of me. She would not she be, happy. be happy. But what about the kids? Kids will suffer if the mother's not there because well, now she, you got to take them to a babysitter. No, nah, she, she's she's there enough, and we have a team. Like our yeah. our their grandparents are dope. You know what I mean? Like her her job would not come in the way at all as far as I work from home a lot. Yeah. So when I leave, we've got either my father or his mom um, that help for maybe three four hours a day. That allows me to go to the gym, 
go get my work done, and then I take care of the kid, the house, him. But she wouldn't the whole be day. happy. She wouldn't be happy sitting in the home all day just being a homemaker with the that's, kids. Nah, it's not. Nah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, what's your impression? So, is he the first black guy you've been with? No. Are you white? Um, I was born in Israel. Both my parents are from Ukraine. Whoa. Yeah, so immigrated <laughs> So from, you're Jewish? Yes, born, I mean, grew up Jewish. I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself Jewish now. I'm not religious. You're not, what made you decide not to be Jewish anymore? I didn't, I thought once you're Jewish, you're always a Jewish. I, I don't know, that's, I mean, I guess, technically, <laughs> if you go by your parents. Um, no, so I mean, I grew up in Israel. It's very different than here. I grew up um, watching people fight a religious war. Yeah. Bombs. Um, which is very different, and that just made me question religion. There are over 4,300 different religions, and I've seen people killed, people I love killed over religion, so I just started to question it. Um, and then, you know, moving to America after living in Israel, I would go to church here um, just because I love the message. Um, I love the community. You would go to Jewish church or no, Christian no, church? No, no, Christian church out here oh, with my I friends. So I love the message. I love the community. Um, I didn't love um, how they were just trying to collect money. I was yeah. like, just started questioning right. things like, um, just didn't make sense for me. And then, yeah, just the older I got, the more I started thinking for myself, the more um, I've just been turned away from it. So you are Christian? I'm not, no. Oh, you're neither Jew nor Christian? No, no, That's I'm so not crazy, religious huh? at all. And how, what do your parents say when you abandon religion? Um, nothing. Are they, they're Jewish too, of course, but yeah. they, they're okay with that? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And are you Christian? Mm -mm. Are you Jewish? Mm -mm. You atheist? Mm -mm. What? I guess the best label is agnostic. Agnostic. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not certain of what there is as far as afterlife is concerned, um, but I think once you're, once, the lights is cut off, the lights is cut off, and it's, it's a wrap. But I'm not 100% I'm not <laughs> certain on that, right. you know what I mean? Like, because it's, it could be possibly that, but you know, I, I grew up Christian, you know what I mean, a Christian household, right, of but course. you know, my 30 some my years walking this earth, I've gotten to this point where, you know, I question everything, and a lot of, I mean, pretty much the same thing she says from just from a Christian perspective. Um, I question everything, and a lot of stuff doesn't make any sense. Um, it's a lot of different agendas and you know ulterior motives with with all this stuff. It's, it's a whole deep rooted conversation. But at this point in my life, um, yeah, I just you know try to be a good person, good morals, good values, you know. And so you believe that God exists. I mean, He might exist. He might, yeah. And you're just not sure. Yeah. Oh, I see. And what did your parents say when we you? We never had. We never had the conversation. You never say, "I'm no more. I'm no longer a Christian." Nah. I'd probably break my mama's heart talking to her about that. Yeah, you know I mean? that's but what I, I asked. Yeah, yeah. Well, black people She's love very religious. It. She's very yeah. religious. And they some of the meanest people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> All in the name of Jesus. Yeah, she's not like that though. But you know what? You know what comes with that. And if that's a problem to me too, if if I'm even a, afraid or apprehen apprehensive about having that conversation with somebody, is because of you know how I see the world or put somebody off. That's a big issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, we have how many eight billion people yeah. on this earth? Everybody has different ways of looking at life. There's no way everybody's gonna follow around the same way of, of thinking. So that's right. if I get that much animosity or backlash because I see the world different than yesterday, that's a big problem to me. You know what I mean? So, Your father's a Christian too? I don't know what my father is. You don't know? Nah. Why don't He's you He's probably know? a Christian. I don't me and my father have it's it's kind of weird, you know what I mean? So I don't I don't know what he believes or what he follows. I'd, I'd, I'd assume he's Christian, but um, if he's anything like me, he probably be he probably be agnostic too. Because we we have you know, we think about the same we think about things the same, but I don't talk to my father often at all. So. Why not? We just have a strained relationships a little bit. What happened? I mean, why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, so it's just some things happened back in the day that uh, caused caused the, the the course of our lives to you know to separate from each other. I mean, I'm not going to go in like a bunch of detail, right. man. But yeah, of course. You know, it's just uh, I don't have any ill will towards. We just don't we don't talk often. It's, our relationship is a bit strained because of things that happened in the past. And did he yeah. do something to you? Um, that made you indi in indirectly. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just a family situation. Right. You know I mean, a family. But situation. he didn't. He didn't do anything to Stevie, personally. Nah. Like well, make you angry or treated you in the wrong way or anything. Well, I mean, that's I mean, but I'm sure most parents do stuff to 
kids to piss them off. But I don't want to minimize it. Like, it was something very significant that happened to us. Nothing, nothing crazy. Right. You know what I mean, said. nothing like uh, nothing. Why not forgive him for whatever it was? Why I, mean, not I essentially forgive? have. Like, it's just what we haven't since that happened. Nothing's been the same. You know what I'm saying? Since since uh, we've had a situation happen in the past, nothing has been the same. I don't think it will ever be the same. It's just you know we two grown ass alpha men that <laughs> that. You know, uh, I, I can't even throw that. I hate that damn term. We too, like... Dominant. Yeah, it was just, we too much alike in, 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 in addition to what happened with the family and things of that nature. Like, it's just, it's strained. It's just it's severely strained. Do you want to be close to him? Not necessarily. So you don't, lo- you don't have a, like, I wish my father and I, you don't ever think, wow, I wish my father and I was close I now have a family. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, well, I've had those. T- I've had those thoughts in the past, and I've attempted to like you know patch things up as far as me, uh, my actions, and being proactive. But like, it's only so much you can do. You Meaning I mean? that you've apologized to him for being angry at him for whatever happened. Um, I, mm, our apology doesn't even doesn't make sense given the context. But I don't want to like be. I don't want to disclose what took place back of course, then. Yeah. But, um, and it was, it's not something like, we, we've been in each other's company you know, numerous times you know, since uh, what took place happened. And it's just, it is, it's, it's, it, is, it, is, it is what it is at this point. Like, what do you think, in spite of what happened, do you think there's ever a time to be angry at someone? I'm not angry. So why not apologize to him for, for overreacting to the situation? I'm sorry, I was wrong. It doesn't make it right whatever happened, right? Mm-hmm. But if you were to say, you know, I'm sorry for holding that against you, I realize you couldn't help it, that would bring you guys close together again. But, I mean, that doesn't make sense given the context of the situation. Like, but, we've, since then, we've had, we've had a couple of opportunities to, to um, you know, I guess to patch things up or whatever, man, but like, like I don't have any ill will. It's not. It's not any animosity there. It's just that our relationship is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've attempted to, you know, bring some normality to you know our relationship or whatever, man. But it, just, it is what it is. We're just different people. Mm-hmm. Like, if if it was a friend, you know, you grow apart. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just yeah. me. It's just essentially like that. You know what I'm saying? On top of like what took place. Like I don't like if something was happening to him tomorrow, I'd be on a plane trying to sort it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, but as far as the father son thing and us being all key key with each other, it's just it's just not gonna happen because we're just you two love people. Him. Absolutely, I you love, love him. him. Yeah. Have you forgiven your mother for the things she did wrong while raising? <laughs> <you>? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> Man, my mom don't need to be forgiven for anything, but. Uh, Yes, I, she, she's, she's I an angel. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. An angel. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. And so she, she was perfect in the way she raised you? I mean, there's no such thing as perfect, but it, my mom was a, was, she, she did, she's a beast. She did a very good job given the circumstances she was given. And have you forgiven her for the little mistakes she made with you? Even if Things I, even, you even if. she had not if, did or said or. Try to control or any little thing. Have you forgiven her for those things? Even if there, if even if there's something I'm not aware that I haven't forgiven her for, I will forgive her right now because it's like it's just no. My mom is good. She didn't she didn't do anything wrong. And so she made no mistakes with you while raising. She t- everything she did was perfect. She could have. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, absolutely, she seven? has. But but nothing. There's nothing that she's done that it has uh, impacted me, you know, negatively to this point. Like, I came out, I'm, I'm good, you know what I mean, so. Where do, why do you think your father has such a hard time dealing with her? I don't know, I don't, I don't. Have you ever asked him? I don't, I her don't. Her mothers don't. tend to put on one front with the kids, but she's held to deal with with the husband. But they, 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 they've been divorced for like damn near 20 years now. Right. I mean, they don't. Have you ever asked him why, what was it about her that made I, I don't, it would be It would be like personal information that took place between those two. That's like, it shouldn't be in my business. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, it hasn't, that conversation would just be weird to tell, like, like why I'm going to talk to you about the ongoings between you and your woman right. as a son. Like, no, nah, I, I would never, you know, overstep. 
You know what I mean? But um, what do you think would happen if you went to your mother? You thought about some stuff. She would irritate you. Well, you know how women like to control and dominate and uh, try to live through you. What would you think would happen if you went to her? You know, I realized that you uh, you were a little control in there. You know, you you smother me a little bit. I'm just throwing out an example. Yeah, yeah. And I realized that that made me a little angry at you, and I'm sorry for resenting you for that. To my mother? Uh huh. What do you think she would do? She'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, does it make any, what you, you bump your head, baby? Like, what you talking about? That would be something like that because. She wouldn't admit that you were wrong? Nah, because it wouldn't make any sense. Like, and then my, and like, my mom admits all the faults. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing perfect in relationships. And she, she's the first to say, I'm not perfect. There's stuff I could have done better, but big picture, like she did the best she could given the circumstances. And I can't blame her for anything she may have done incorrectly. You know what I mean? Like, but I, that conversation of me coming to her, like, you could have overstepped it. No, my mom is, like, the most giving person ever. Like, she will give you her backbone if she could. Like, that's just how she is. So uh, her overstepping or overpowering me or smothering me, it just doesn't make sense given the dynamic of our relationship. You know what okay. I mean? She, she's, a, she's, she's dope. Amazing. Yeah. And, and what would your mother do if you went and forgave her? Because you know how those Jewish mothers are. <laughs> <laughs> My mom passed away, so she's not uh, here anymore. We're lucky but for you, huh? No, no. Uh. My mom was same, very similar to Stevie's mom. She was very loving and caring, and she didn't care about anything other than making her baby, a.k.a. me, happy and my So dad. she made no mistake with you either? Um, his, there was nothing that you resented about her you know, while you were growing up? I'm... Um, I was a little bit of a rebel as a teenager, so I was really bad, and uh, no, I don't, she didn't do anything that made me resent her. I was, I've always been really close to my mom and my dad, um, but I'm an immigrant to this country, so family and um, just the culture I was brought up is everything, so there's really not a lot of resentment with parents, like your family is your everything. My wife for working three jobs and going to college was to take care of my parents who sacrificed everything to give me an opportunity to live in America. Amazing. So this is where your mother aspired, but your father still lives in Israel? No, he's here. Oh, he's here now? He's here. Yeah. I went to Israel. I love Israel. It's beautiful. It is Have you ever gone there? Mm. Oh my God. She wants me to go. I know. go one day. Yeah. I think that one of the uh, requirements to go to heaven when you die is you have to have gone to Israel first. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 He's you, strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Israel is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It really is amazing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we went once and then we sent another uh, truckload, of, busload of people back over there. Yeah. Young people and stuff like that to visit. That's how much I love Israel. Well, I guess I got to go then. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, you will really. And then you're going to see the Allah U Abba people. <laughs> they, <they'll... laughs> I can't keep the stone face, bro. Eh? <laughs> they remind me of the blacks in America. Yeah. There's a city called David, right? And um, the Jews gave it over to the Allah U Abba people. And instead of them making it look good, they turned into a ghetto. And, and the Jews got their areas so pretty. Mm. You know, the white people are, right? <laughs> 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 it's so nice and clean. Yeah. And the city of David can be beautiful. Mm. It has all these hills and things. But because they're mad at the Jews they about messed, nothing, yeah, they, it they won't up. even clean up their own place. Yeah. Isn't that a mess? It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. Give, I'm saying, given how you described it and yeah. comparing it to how it is here, it makes yeah. sense. Give it me. makes sense? No, it makes no sense. What, what, what does it make sense about that? Why would you not clean up where you live to get at someone else? That makes sense. Because they're angry. When you're angry, you can't. You're constantly you can't trying to get revenge against the people or the person that you get nothing done for yourself. Right. It's terrible. Isn't that amazing? Terrible. It makes sense because people are crazy. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with the blacks? <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, you got you to gotta be more specific. What blacks you talking about? In America. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, generations and generations of like cultural trauma, conditioning, you know what I mean, brainwashing. So By I think who? It is. Uh, family, TV, um, society, victim mind state, victim, victimhood mentality. Yeah. yeah. You agree with that? I don't have an opinion on it. I grew up in Israel, so I can't tell How long have you been you. over here? I'm, I moved here in 2004. So. And you haven't noticed that most of the blacks are screwed up? No. Oh, you don't get out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the ones I'm around uh, are not, so. And how are they not? They're good people. What's good about them? They have good character, good morals. They're fun to be around. Uh, it is because of the lack of love from the fathers and the mothers have turned them away from the fathers because when you turn away from your earthly father, you turn away from God. Men represent God on earth, God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. And the worst thing that can happen to a child, any race, is to turn them away from their fathers. Let's get more specific, though, though. You said, what's wrong with, with black folk? Like, what specifically are you talking about? The anger, uh, the begging. Like, like crime. And the begging for affirmative action and reparations and crime and the way they treat one another and others. It wasn't like that when I was growing up. It wasn't like that. Yeah. We didn't rely on the government or anything. And yeah, welfare definitely messed up black folks, too. Yeah. But that's kind of out of their control. If you're raising a welfare condition, you don't know anything outside of that. So, you know, that's just perception. Um, and as far as crime and stuff is concerned, like, I wouldn't paint all black folks with that crime. Well, not all, not all, not all, but those, But those, but those, <laughs> those <laughs> typically take place in, like, crime-ridden areas. You know what I'm saying? Like so, Beverly Hills? <laughs> <laughs> Um, is Beverly Hills a crime-ridden area? Is, is it? I don't know. No, but they're all up there committing crime. No. Oh. See, I, don't, I, can't, I can't paint all black folks with that brush. But well, I, I said I know, not I know, all, not yeah, all, not I, all, but most. I, I know what you're talking about. Because, like, yeah. if, and what if, am I talking about? If I, if I, if I, I know it's anecdotal, but, like, if I pull it back to just my family, you know, tons of black people, you know, they're not all intermixed in crime or whatever, man. I probably know like a handful of people that are, but I know a handful of white folks that are intermixed in crime as well. But I see what you're saying. Um, what am I saying? But, what do you see that I'm but saying? But like the, it's like a stereotype too. It's like black folks get that label. You know what I mean? And then, you know, the act of, you know, one black, black, black person or uh, the act of uh, black folks in a certain area doing some crazy shit is gonna cast all black folks as being associated or doing Share, or doing the same type of behavior. And, you know, that's, that's not the reality either. Um, I don't think crime is, even though black folks are, mo are the most responsible for crime, like, they're like uh, violent crimes and yep. things like that, but those happen in like these really fucked up areas though. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's reasons for that as well. I'm not, I'm not, imp I'm not trying to like, you know, say it's okay because this is why it is, but you know, the murder rate, violence, all this, all that stuff happens in these certain pockets of, of, of uh, black population in the hood or whatever, man, but all black folks don't live in the hood and we need to do stuff to address that. Um, but I think the under underlying issue is kind of like, for me, when I, when I made it anecdotal as far as like black folks and what we struggle with, I could not have a conversation about you know, how we see eye to eye on certain things more conservative with the black folk. Right. I, I couldn't have that conversation with the majority of my friends because they're so emotionally tied to how they see the world. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest issue. It, it is. You know what I'm saying? Emotional. Because they're, they're, they're in their way and as long as they hold on to this, this, this you know, it's, it's a brainwash. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 the, the, they need to lift the, the veil because they're just doing themselves a disservice. You know what I'm saying? By, but they can't help it though. Cause I, I used to be there, bro. I used to be like, you know, black, black struggle this, you know, fuck the white man, blah, 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 <laughs> fucking blah. I used to be like that, yeah, bro. Exactly. And it took, it took me being on YouTube, having these conversations with people all the time from different backgrounds, actually taking other people's perceptions. And it's like, I, was, I, was, I used to be at a point where I'm black, I've had, I've, I see the world this way, and if you ain't black, you can't say anything about what I'm talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? I used yeah. to be that way, but there's, there's, there's you have to take in consideration everybody else's perspective. And if you, if you really take yourself out of there, take all the bias out of there, which black folks will never do because they play the victim card, um, 
It's like, bro, it's right there in front of you. Like, it's not, it's, it's not as bad as you think it is. Yeah. It's, it's not as bad as you think it is, but you just can't let it go. You will not let it go. Yeah. And then we get cast as Uncle Tom, yeah. house nigga this, that, and the third, because we do not identify with the black struggle. You know what I'm saying? I know it's, what a, it's, it's a victimhood, man. It pisses me off because it's like, ain't nothing I can't do. Nothing, there's nothing you can't do that I can't do because of this. That's I right, mean, it's because of fucking you being generational like conditioning to think that you're less than because you're black, which is a bunch of bullshit. And, and it's comfortable. It's complacent. It, it requires you. You don't, you don't have to like, as long as, there's, as long as I have this victimhood or this complacent mentality, I don't have to put any burden on me to go out there and do anything because as long as there's this, the black struggle label, he can't help it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it makes him comfortable in his complacency. That's a bunch of bullshit yeah, too. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, black folks are not lazy. Black folks are, if, they, if we got enough like, strength and power in us to like, take the shit over if we wanted to, but like, the, our, how, how far is our dollar stretch buying shit that don't fucking matter? If they put that money into like real estate and companies That's and right. LLCs and all this shit, bro, you can change the fucking societal image of like the black struggle type of shit. But as long as society keeps dangling this, hey, you you a nigga, you know you can't do right, blah, 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 blah. They're going to keep lashing onto it all the, t- all the damn time because it's generational attachment to that shit and it's comfortable. Victimhood is comfortable. What a mess. Yeah, bro. That's a shame. <laughs> They have good black people in Israel. <laughs> See, when I grew up, the only darker skinned people were from Morocco. In Israel. In, in Israel. Yeah. But they found some real black Jews, right? That were lost in wilderness somewhere. And they. No, nothing they, about that. What would they call Bill? Ethiopian Jews. Ethi- what that? Ethiopian Jews? Ethiopian Jews. Jews. They Africa. Were, they were like yeah. real Jews. And they, and they brought them over to Israel once they found, they were still living that life and everything. That's awesome. And you don't know about that? No, I mean, I've been here since 04, so. 2004? Well, this happened before 2004. But you was a kid, too, so you probably. I mean, yeah. Oh, I yeah. left when I was 12. Oh, okay. So. Amazing. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, I was 12. Came here in the eighth grade. So, um, is Stevie the first black guy you dated? No. Oh, yeah, because once you go black, you know you can't go back, yep. right? That <laughs> That's what happened. Have you ever dated a white guy? Nope. A Jewish guy? Nope. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, she really took it serious. <laughs> not going back. Yep. <laughs> and so do the black girls or ladies roll their eyes at you when they see you with Stevie? We haven't had too many issues, no. Maybe like a troll comment here and there, but... We really don't have any issues. How, how have they treated you when they see you with her, with Laura? I mean, we're in San Diego too, man. So like, it's not uncommon to see interracial couples everywhere. Like, I, I oh, bet yeah. you place us somewhere else where it's a bunch of black folks. They probably trip, but I mean. Have you ever dated a black woman? Yeah. And which is easier, you dated a white woman? Yeah. You dated a Mexican? Mm, no. No. And then you dated a, is Lord the first Jew? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro, because I don't be having comments. No, I won't date as far as like me actually having some type of connection with someone. Nah. So uh, which race of women is easier to deal with? <sighs> Bruh, come on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she not easy. She yeah, not easy. I know you. She not, tell she, me. Not, she not easy, but um, nah, I can't cast it down to some damn race because everybody damn different. I mean, because she considers herself white for all intents and purposes. If I was going to say, you know, she's easy because somebody, somebody, if someone wants to say she's easy because she's white, I'm like, nah, hell no, nah, bro, you bugging. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I wouldn't, I couldn't confine it to just damn race. Everybody's damn different, man. It's, it's more of a cultural thing where you grew up, what you've been through. Is that's that's kind of what's going to dictate how this woman is with you. Their background, and upbringing, you know what I mean, and what she been through, and she's she she been through a lot. So like, give me an example, uh, a lore not being easy. Um, <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> um, I mean, she's opinionated though, man. So it's like, like. It ain't like if, if what I say go, you know what I mean? Like if I say something, she gonna tell me how she feel about it, all right? And there may be like some 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 back and forth for a little bit, but like if it comes down to, uh, and I guess it's more specific, specified to our relationship and shit, like how things are gonna go in our relationship, you know what I mean? It's some shit we need to address and I bring it up, you know what I mean? Uh, 
we'll go back and forth, whatever the fuck. But usually, she ends up like, you know, all right, bro, you got it. You know? Um, but it, if it was easy, it'd be like, you know, uh, babe, I want this. Okay, babe, here, here you go. It's not like that. It's not like that. And so, of all the races of women, though, which one is, you know? <laughs> I can't say that, the bro. Loud mouthers. Nah, she don't pop off of the mouth at me. Which one did? Which race? Nobody's ever pop off of the mouth at me. Like and so that. they're all the same? Nah, but it's a, it's about what I'm going to uh, put myself through, too. Like, if I get a little inkling of some popping off of the mouth type of stuff, I'm she's not going to be there long. You know what yeah. I mean? She's going to be gone? Yeah. She'll be long gone. Yeah, absolutely. Long basic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me ask, why black guys instead of Jewish guys? I want black. Because the Jewish guy got the money, black. right? Money doesn't do anything for me. I make my own money. Whatever. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> no, but what, why black guys rather than Jewish guys? It's or white guys? I'm, just what I'm attracted to. I haven't been attracted to white guys. Really? Mm-hmm. And what's attracted to about black guys that takes away your attention from all other guys? I mean, it'd have to be person specific, but I mean, I like tall, muscular men. So I like um, the more masculine traits. I like directiveness, decisiveness, um, independence. So. And you couldn't find that in a Jewish guy? Or a white guy? No. You love white people? I love all people. Do you love white people? I love all people, yeah, white people. How about white people? Yeah, I love all people. <laughs> you love white people? I love everybody. Well, I don't love everybody, but I don't discriminate. Yeah. And, and you love white people? Yeah. Do you believe that white supremacy exists? Um, in certain areas, and it depends on where you are, but like, it, does, it doesn't exist enough for it to be an issue for me. And what would, how would you define it? And then it was, it's more it, like, it's more like, not supremacy, but like a majority supremacy. You know what I mean? So it's like the majority of people here are white, so you're going to have to deal with what comes with a certain demographic being the majority. So like you go to certain stores, it's going to, you know, be accommodated towards more white people. Um, but, nah, bro, like, no, nice. no, nah. You believe racism is this? Yeah. And, and why do you believe that? Um, I believe that people can be racist towards a different group. And how would you define racism? Hatred or prejudice of a different group that's not your own. And so why not just call it hatred? Because that's what it is, instead yeah. of calling it racism. Call it hatred. Because if you call it for what it is, you have a better chance of overcoming it. Because if the Absolutely. heart changed from yeah, hate to love, may, right. but if you call it racism, it would seem that's something you cannot overcome because it, they're calling it something that is not. Yeah, placing labels is no good. Right. I think you can define things better. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have anger? Um, we all do. How about you? I'm not a very angry person, no. Do you have anger? Yeah. And how did you, be, how did you develop anger? Where did that come from? Um, I don't know what I've developed it from. I think it may be a reaction to situations that don't go my way. Is this something you want to overcome? Absolutely, yeah. And why have you overcome already? Um, I have um, done a lot, but it's always a work in progress. Um, I think getting 1% better every day, learning from every situation. Stevie, you have anger? No, not really. You have no anger. I mean, I get, I can get angry if something pisses me off, but that's not some. It doesn't happen often at all. Do you believe that you can overcome anger, period, and never have to deal with it again? It'll be taken away from you. Uh, no. Nah. You know, like to the point where, like, no matter what I see, I will not, I will not get triggered to become angry. Right. Do I, do I think that can right. take place? No. Why not? Because. I mean, for one, if 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 something's done intentional to me, to I'm, I'm a, a, an expressive anger, expressive dominance. It's like a checking system too. Like, like I'm not gonna allow something to to go down with, without 
allowing whomever it is to know how I feel about this. If I just like peel back and like just let it happen, that's not gonna happen. But I guess there's a way to communicate that too, with not without being angry. Yes. But but anger is needed in some in in, in some instances. Like, I'm not gonna let anybody disrespect her in front of me. They gonna get some of my anger. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to let anybody disagree with my mom in front of me. They want some of my anger. But you know could I mean? you deal with that without being angry? I could, but I don't want to. Why not? <laughs> because I, they, they, they need to feel it. They need to feel it. Yeah. And what is it that they need to feel? To, 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 to know that this whatever is not going to go down. It's not, it's not accepted. It's not acceptable at all. You know what I mean? It's, it's to, in order to check them. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want you to know that you can live a life without anger. I know you can. Yeah, I know you, you can. can. That it, because anger is a spirit that made a home in you, and it's ego life. It, you, you're emotional, mm-hmm. you're up and down emotionally. You're concerned about what other people say or think about you, but if you didn't have the anger, you would be free from all that, yeah. and yet you'll be able to deal with things with perfect love, and that's where real strength is. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I, I I agree with you. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to him. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's something I work on. The amount of time that I stay in my emotions or anger yeah. or anything, I think you can limit that time to, whether it be ten seconds, like I count to ten, I'm not angry anymore, versus being upset for a couple of days over something. Um, do you agree with me or not that men are the most hated species on this side of heaven? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think they've got it harder than women. And why are men so hated? I don't know. Delusional women. <laughs> do you agree with that? Yeah. And, and, and why you do agree? Mm-hmm. Why are men so hated? And this is all men, not yeah. just. White man or yeah. Jewish man. I think uh, it's easy. It's easy to hate men too because there's this whole, you know, patriarchy and you know, men have it easy because we're men. And but it's not the case. So when you actually hear about um, what men are going through, it's actually surprising. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to it. Like you know, that whole the, the the patriarchy is what people what confuses people. You know what I mean? Like. Feminist movement. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's a whole, it's, it's the matrix again, bro. It's a societal condition and I believe that, you know, men have all the power, we can do what we want, you know, women are oppressed, it all comes from that. So it's easy to put the target on their backs, but then you, then you dismiss what men are actually going through. I mean, because, especially right now, it's a, 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 a life for men is, it's probably never been worse. I mean, we're in the weak, weakest spot of society we've ever been in as far as emotionally, you know, mental health is, is probably the biggest issue with men. Yeah. Um, you suicide. Know, suicide, you know what I'm saying? The dating world, lack of like, you know, intimacy, connection with a, with a woman, you know what I mean? To, testosterone levels for men are dropping. Um, the feminist movement is, you know, pussifying men at the same time. They're making men more soft to be more, you know, in touch with their emotions and, and they're, they're trying to, you know, cast masculinity aside, that's why this whole toxic masculinity thing is, is a thing in, in the first place, it's really not a thing. Like, yeah. like anything can be yeah. toxic if you have too much of it, but anything masculine is considered toxic right now. Right. That's, that's a problem. You know, dominance is looked at as, as negative, you know, stoicness, uh, anything manly is looked at as negative right now, so it's easy to put that target on, on like your, your typical man. Well, why are men giving into it? Yeah. Why are men doing it, allowing that? Because women don't have real power at all. It's just that men allow them to do it, so they're getting worse instead of better. Why are men allowing it? I wouldn't even I mean, society is a, is a, is a motherfucker, bro. Like, like I, I don't... I, I, I ask this question to myself, too, because it's like, it only this only happened in the past, what, five, ten years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before, it got worse. And it's been going on for it, a, a longer than that, but it but got it, worse but, over but the years. To the point where, like, men are not saying anything about right. it. Right. And the, men, and the yeah. men that do say anything about it, right, Andrew Tate, for example, like, he is the epitome of the hatred that society has for yeah. men. Right. He comes out here and says anything, they take him off. Yeah. That's, that's an example of, I, I, I would assume, where a lot of men sit because... Like, I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of men still like you and me walking around here, yeah. but if they go out here voicing their opinion on something, they're going to get demonized. And 
you know, cancel culture society, like that social media stuff is, is, is real. Like you can lose your job over somebody putting a negative review about you or, or in, uh, in it, it work or something, something gets to a boss that, you know, show highlights an employee in an unsavory type of way. They're going to get rid of him. You know what I'm saying? Like we're in this soft ass feminist type of, of society where, you know, masculine men have their hands tied and you really gonna have to show how masculine you are right now to actually stand up and say something because if you you're gonna say this shit you're gonna, you're gonna feel it too you better be prepared, prepared to feel it so it's like you know is it is it worth it for these men to to it is because we need to fix it yeah. but like on an individual basis like because things are only going to get worse they are. in the country and if men get weaker because it's the men that leads the way. Mm -hmm. And if they become weaker, it's only gonna get worse for the men. Yep. Not, I mean, for the whole world, really. Yep. Because the women suffer too. Yep. Uh, because they need men to be men. Men, they, women, even the most masculine women needs a masculine man, Absolutely. but society's trying to attack the masculine man. Absolutely. It makes no sense. It makes no, well, it, it, it makes sense, Yeah, bro. it makes sense. It makes sense, sense at the end of the day because of the feminist movement's all chasing the almighty dollar. That's yeah. what it is, yeah. you know what I mean? Women are more empowered, more like more empowered, more educated, all this, you put money in their pocket. That's why, you know, the feminist movement is has as much tension that it has. That's why women can be fat and not be held accountable. That's why women can be hoes and not be held accountable because yeah. all that shit puts money in the economy. Right, Absolutely. they spend they spend the most money. They're being used, for the yeah, money. yeah, they're being used. But yeah. if you tell them that, it's a fight. <laughs> it's a yeah. fight. So. Why is it so hard for women to hear the truth? I asked her. We asked. We talk about this all the time. I, mean, I asked the same question. I think just zero accountability, not being able to take a look in the mirror. Is it because their ego? Ego and just have been coddled and enabled. Amazing. Um, and and they, they can remember the truth about everybody else and yeah. everything else, but when you ask them about themselves, oh, I'm a nice person. I, but I can, I, can, I can understand. I'm not going to empathize for it because all it takes is self-awareness, but you know, most people are not self-aware. I can, I, can, I can understand how, as a woman, you've grown up and you've been molded to see the world this way. Right. Like you are, you've been told you're... <laughs> You're, you're your beautiful, mama, you've been told you, world. yeah, accept you the way you are. If anybody, you you a queen, if anybody has anything to, else to say negative about it, then they're the fucking enemy. They, you've, been, you've been brainwashed to see the world this way. Yeah. So you know, you don't know anything outside of that. So it takes some self-awareness to really crack through that, but you know, how many people are gonna actually place themselves in a position to, you know, to break through the matrix, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yeah, right. it's a small percentage, and that was me. I mean, I hated, I think that was a lot of our issues. I hated hearing anything about myself. Like, yeah. So it really took a lot to break through that. Right on. I have said that um, a man should never marry an educated woman that uh, working because they would never make for a good wife and mother. Am I wrong about that? You are. I, I, and, but you had a breakthrough because he broke that ego and so like, but most educated women, they are so high on the mm -hmm. horse that they are unwilling to be broken into the right way. Yeah, I agree that it's a small minority that can um, become truly self-aware and change and um, be a submissive woman, let your man lead and really flourish in what really biologically feels better. I was probably the most masculine woman, but it feels the absolute best to be feminine. Um, I've achieved so much in my career and nothing feels better than taking care of the house, cooking a meal for my man, taking care of my baby, no award or amount of money that I've ever made. So what comes close. And we ran out of time here, but what was it about Laura in the very beginning that made you want to go through all that Trying to bring her to some kind of common sense. I mean, that's personal. I mean, it's personal, but like our. What made our, you decide No, but to like our, 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 our connection, our chemistry was so damn crazy that I wasn't gonna just risk, you know, letting that go. You know what I mean? For. It was worth the worst, it was worth the effort. Like, the reason why I'm getting pissed and tight about getting you where I need you to where it be is because I care about you and I want right. this to work. And she told me the same thing. Like, we'd be sitting there arguing, like, you know, I love you, I want this to fucking work, blah, 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 blah. And we, we it was worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but um, I don't think that that <laughs> is, can happen. Like, people don't care no more. You know what I mean? Like, that organic, that real shit, like, that, that shit don't happen no more. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, to, 
you, you got too many options. You got it's too many distractions to actually like give your all for somebody when you could potentially have some something somewhere else. But we both know where we were, where we've been, what we wanted to do, and it was all worth the effort. And it ended up, it ended up, it ended up fucking working. You know Amazing. I mean? so, you mentioned what's the name of the officer you just mentioned, uh, the conservative, that they'll throw him off. This? Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Tate. Tate. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I happen to know him, you know, mm -hmm. I had him on my show, yeah. and, and I just saw him a couple weeks ago in Texas for Uncle Tom. Have you seen Uncle Tom 2 yet? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. What is it? What is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a conservative uh, um, documentary about what's going on between bl black conservative and liberal conservative mm -hmm. and some of the stuff we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And he's in there too. Mm -hmm. But you guys should check it out. Yeah. There's a one and a two. Two just came out. Yeah. And it's very, very. But you look like him. Who? Um, Tatum. Oh, Officer Tatum? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about. I was talking about Andrew Tate. You know Andrew Tate, right? Who is Andrew Tate? You don't know who Andrew Tate is? It's South for me. You're probably the one who person on the whole globe who don't know who Andrew Tate is. Mm -hmm. He you got canceled. He talks about. Uh, you know who he is? Oh. oh, you need to have him on the damn show. <laughs> you look like officer. I know, I know who Officer Tatum is. You look, yeah, it, yeah. Are you sure that's not your brother? Nah. <laughs> you better ask your mama or your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and we you watch some of like, his videos. You yeah. sound like him and you look like him. Yeah. Yeah, you I thought of Tatum? him. No. Yeah, I thought of him when you walked in. Yeah. When I saw him. I, I know who that is. And, He's, I, a, he's another conservative that's yeah, hated. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. totally hated. I, yeah, but I see, I don't, it's like, I just had this conversation with uh, um, some other creators like this past weekend, man. It's like, I, clearly you identify as conservative, yes. right? Like, I don't, I don't, I, but you get placed in the box when you, when you say things similar to what other people say. So it's like, I just, I focus on reality. You know what I mean? Like, I focus on, like, what looks normal and what looks crazy. Yeah. And then, if I'm just here talking about like real life shit, they just place you in this little black box. Like I'm in the conservative box. I don't, I don't, I don't. So you're not conservative? I, I, may, I don't, clear, I mean, put me where you want to put me. You oh, know what I'm saying? It. But it's like, I just, I just keep it 100. I just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I call out the bullshit and focus on the real shit. And you know, doing that, you get placed in the conservative box. You, uh, <laughs> you love Laura? My woman? Uh -huh. Hell yeah. What is love? Putting somebody before me. <laughs> And, and, and you love, you <laughs> love. Can't use my answers. <laughs> you love Stevie. I do. And what is love? Um, that mm. was my answer from earlier. Oh, putting him before me. Oh, okay. He stole my answer. I gotta put you guys on the hot seat. All right. Okay. And so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. All right, shit. Same time. I ask them first. And then, I mean, if yeah, you can go at the same time. All it, right. It's fun. The hot seat. What is a man? Me. You? Yeah. What is a man? Stevie Knight. Uh, do we need more white babies? <sighs> we need more babies in general because the population's declining. <laughs> we need all kinds of babies. Damn, Stevie, bro. do we need more white babies? Yeah, but, I mean, what? We need more babies, period. How about but. white babies? <laughs> Yes, I mean, and, and Laura, you say yes. We, um, I started White History Month five years ago. July is White History Month. Did y'all know that? No. Nope. You started it. Uh huh. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. 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 <laughs> and I started in July because if you know that July just feels white. <laughs> Uh, That's funny. Uh, um, is it ever okay to tell a woman she's fat? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> is Joe Biden the worst president you've ever seen? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, how much weight, uh, how much best weight can you press? Gosh, 65 pounds. How about you? Probably like 380. Whoa. Is abortion worse than slavery? Is abortion worse than slavery? No. No. Um, do you support abortion? I'm I'm impartial. Like I don't I don't care enough about it. But my thing is is that the uproar about it. It's like I don't feel like that's a right 
it's a service provided. So why are you getting pissed off that the government just taking something off the table? Like you can still do something with your body. You can get pregnant. You can figure out how to get rid of a baby, but you can't rely on the government to get rid of it for you. You, know, you got to figure it out. You support abortion? Um, I think women should be able to do whatever they want. But again, the, the uproar about it, that was unnecessary because you have so many ways to prevent getting pregnant. So do you think women should be allowed to kill the man baby in the womb? Uh, no, I don't like that the man has no say in any of this. Uh, did the cow eat the cabbage? What? Did the cow eat the cabbage? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the question. No idea. Uh, no sure. idea. <laughs> sure. True or false, if they took away our guns, they would take away our freedom. True. Yes. Uh, uh, who would you rather see as president? Uh, Oprah Winfrey, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Big Mama Michelle, Camilla Harris, uh, Hunter Biden. Donald Trump. Yeah, Trump. You love the Great White Hope? I don't love him, but he the best option that you gave me. Yeah. You love the Great White Hope? Yeah, don't, not as a person, but definitely the best option and liked him as a president. Does a chicken have lips? No. No. <laughs> Did the bear shit in the woods? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking he about to give us these deeds. I know, right? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> did you uh, write those down? <laughs> did you guys have fun? Absolutely, we did, bro. This was yeah. cool, bro. Right, uh, thank yeah. you guys for thank coming on. Thank you for having Thanks us, for having man. Us. This was I great. I appreciate it. I know. Tell the host how to get to you, watch you, whatever um, thing you guys want yeah, to do. Yeah, I got I'm on, I got two YouTube channels, man. Uh, one, Stevie Knight. It's more music incorporated, but this derived from my night talk channel. We talk about a bunch of societal issues where I focus on reality, you know what I mean, male empowerment, um, just the crazy state of society that we're in right now. I talk about that all the time. I have wifey on there with me talking about it as well. So, and then. Yeah, I don't have a YouTube. You can find me on yeah. his night talk channel. Uh, my Instagram is White Russia. I'm a realtor in San Diego. Amazing. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell. We are now on, uh, what is it? Locals. Locals Locals.com, all right? So hit the link there and check us out. Check out the merch, amazing merch, and let us hear from you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Hey, that was cool. Yeah, you're funny. (laughs) 